Good afternoon, everyone. And are you tired? One talk after the other, the other. Anyway, let me try to keep this as short as I possibly can and uh, hopefully useful. So um, I was born in Pune. My, my parents were refugees from Rawalpindi, now Pakistan. My father was a very strict patriarch and he believed in stern rules for girls. Girls should be seen, not heard. They should be raised to be good, obedient, servile housewives and they should do what they are told and not what they want. And of course, when I was, uh, you know, there's a sound. Yeah. When? Now, right? Okay, sorry. So when I was 11, I was uh, told to wear cover up from top to bottom, salwar kameez, dupattas, and also, of course, don't go out because home, Sorry about that. Uh, because home, no, it's still doing it. <laughs> I'll keep it here. You know, I have a loud voice. I think that here. So because home is the safest place for girls, and outside is a very unsafe place for girls. But is that true? When I was four, I was molested. And you know, sadly, it's not just my story. Maybe of many sitting right here in this room. So. Life at home was neither safe, nor free, nor happy, never free to be anything but my father's definition of a girl. You know, we all know that the streets are not safe for girls. And four rapes an hour, I want to repeat, four rapes in an hour, right, in India. But are they safe at home? Look at what your National Crime Bureau statistics say. One in three ever married women receive domestic violence. And by the way, these are highly underreported. They're probably twice that much, if not more. Then, 90% of all sexual crimes against children and girls are by family members. And again, not reported, like mine was never reported. Right? In fact, one uh, girl was raped by her father. We reported it to Childline. They went there, they came back, and they said, Abu Agin Senekare. Right. That's how the reports go. And nearly 550,000 girls selectively aborted in the womb by their parents. So, is home a haven of safety and protection, which it's supposed to be? And look at the statistics of honor killing. And we know these are highly, highly, highly underreported. The parents giving their own daughters into bondage, child slavery, I call it, girl slavery, actually. And they call it child marriage. Right? And we all know that it is physical, sexual, emotional, economic bondage. And India is the capital. One third of the world's child slaves, girl slaves, child brides, are from India. Okay? Then 19 dowry murders in a day. I checked this several times. I couldn't believe it. Today, today, today. Not many years ago. Okay? Then more than 80% of trafficked children are girls and sold many, often times by their own parents. And all of this is happening at home by people who are supposed to love us and protect us. Domestic violence complaints doubled during COVID when everyone was expected to be at home. Okay, this is all very visible. We all know it. We all shake our heads. Everyone's shaking their heads and saying, oh my God, so bad. But how about the invisibilized oppression? You know, I call our team freedom fighters, and for a reason, now you'll know why. During the freedom struggle, Lokmanya Tilak, what was his war cry? Swaraj is my birthright and I shall have it. Women marched with him. How many years after independence do women have Swaraj? Do they have self-rule? Autonomy for girls is neither desired nor permitted. Many women, and eh, women like all of you, will come and say, you know, my husband allows me to work. My, my laws have said I can wear shorts if I want to. I can wear skirts if I want to. They don't understand what they're saying. Why should adult women live by permission? That is not Swaraj, right? So, but one more thing, and to all the boys here, I often 
often do this to my boys when I train them. You know, to close your eyes for a minute and imagine that the world has changed. Now, boys will be treated the way girls are treated. They will be married the way girls are married. So, imagine you're going to be sent off to a distant land, often married to a stranger. You will provide sex even if you don't desire it. You will live by permission. They, your in-laws will decide whether you will go out, what you will wear, whether you will work or not, right? And your husband will control your money if you have any of your own. If you don't, you will ask for it, right? And you will be very deferent and obedient and subservient to your in-laws. How many of you will do it? Many of say, no, no, we can't marry on those terms. But your sisters have to do that. I was married at 18 without an education. Involuntary migration, I call it, to Lahore, <coughs> born in Pune. Right? And suddenly I realized I felt cast off, I felt abandoned, and I felt that now I must do everything I can to please my husband and my mother-in-law, who thankfully were very kind people. But total loss of autonomy. Right? This is battery locality. Look at the cruelty of it. Look at the cruelty of it. Look what it does. One, all your life, you, uh, you get to hear, when you get married, you see what will happen. Do what you want over here. There you won't be able to do it. Your mother-in-law will teach you a lesson. And yet, we will marry the daughter of. Then, you're a guest in this house. Right? So one, people value their daughters more. That's why 550,000 girls being killed in the boom. That is one. Secondly, dowry. Thirdly, they're more vulnerable to violence and to dowry murders, would we have 19 dowry murders a day if we girls were living in the safety and security of their family with their husbands? I doubt it. Okay? So, yet, it's so naturalized that nobody can think of another system. I asked, I teach all my students, right? And my boys. I said, you know, why can't we change this? It is so cruel to girls. So they said, Are then who will take care of our parents? I said, first of all, when you get married, they'll be young, they don't need taken care, taking care of. Secondly, who's taking care of your sister's parents? I said, I am. So I said, you or your wife? I said, my wife. I said, then why can't she take care of the parents? Those are her parents, she'll take more care of them. But they don't want to think of it. So why is it so difficult to imagine a world where girls are safe, they're not always living in waiting, to be sent off to their husband's home, when it is such a cruel system, why are we still doing it? Why can we not imagine something different? Why can't it be a choice? Who goes to live with whom? Right? You can decide yourself, wherever it's more practical. And why won't we change a system that is so dangerous for our daughters? I was talking to village women about child marriage, and I asked them finally. I said, do you not love your daughters? And they looked at me and they said, what has love got to do with it? Okay, willingly, knowingly, we will do this. And you know what is sad? Family is the cruelest site of oppression. And you know why it is cruel? Not just because of the violence. Because look who we are fighting. Our brothers, our husbands, our fathers. These are not people we want to fight. We want to love them. And so we don't fight often. Women write off their properties. All because relationship should not be spoiled. And secondly, any kind, you know, I've said, spoken to many men. I said, when your parents are being nasty to your wives, why don't you speak up? No, no, I can't disrespect my parents. So my point is, any kind of disagreement is disrespect. Any kind of opposition is defiance. <laughs> Where do girls stand in this? We need to distinguish between respect and complete deference. And secondly, why will boys you should expect your wife to do for your parents what you are prepared to do for her parents. Your in-laws also, <laughs> not just hers. What is this tyranny of the in-laws? What is this tyranny and why do we not oppose it? Now I want to say this. I know it's a very shocking statistic. Please, I'm going to stop for 30 seconds. You should read it. I was stunned. This comes from Pulitzer Prize winning journalists, New York Times. They called it gender side. More girls were killed in the last 50 years precisely they, because they were girls than men killed in all the wars in the 20th century. Look how horrific statistic. 
which is why gender is so important. People don't think it is. They just don't think it is. Look at this. It has lethal consequences. And we need to sit up, sit up. Yeah. And take notice. So what do we do? How am I taking notice? I'm an educator, and I believe that education needs to change. And we need to have lessons of equality in the same way that we have lessons of math, science, history, geography, commerce, everything. Every week, we have what I call as critical dialogues based on a critical feminist pedagogy. And what do we do during that? We teach girls to perceive themselves as equal, autonomous persons deserving respect, having the choice to marry who they want, to marry or not marry, to have children or not have children, to love who they want. And then we talk to boys, 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 that you know, patriarchy is not your fault. But look at how cruel it is to your sisters, your mothers, your wives, future wives, your girlfriends, should you not change. You need to look and critically at the concept of masculinity you have been socialized into. Right? That you can be a caring, nurturing, gentle man and still be a man. You don't have to be a macho, competitive, violent, domineering man to prove that you are a man. You're harming yourselves and you're harming many others. You need to change. And we, and we help parents see that how they raise their sons, all parents, mothers of sons, is very critical to whether their own daughters will flourish and be safe. What needs to change? Patriarchal families have no place in a democracy. They are contradictory and they need to go. Not just change, they need to go. Then secondly, family structure needs serious rethinking. We need to think of alternatives to patrilocality. And women have every right to autonomy and to freedom. They should not need to seek any permission, adult women, to how they live their life. We need more equal marriages. Boys and men need to learn how to cook, clean, take care of their children, take care of their parents. I call it upskilling, upgrading. Because women can do that and they can do this. So you need to catch up. And unless you do that, don't talk about gender equality. That's what gender equality means. Okay. And the tyranny of the in-laws needs to end. It has no, in-laws have no legal right over you at all, daughters-in-law. Remember that, girls. Assert your rights. What's the call to action to all of you? The boys were asking me, you know, what can we do? Here's what you can do. One, let's build democratic families. Do you want a true democracy? Yes. 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 Never having that unless you have true democratic <coughs> families. So unless you have full gender equality, Democratic families, there cannot be a true democracy in the world. You can't have one half of your population treating themselves like subjects, and you treating them like subjects, and believe that we are an independent country. We cannot be, okay? Men need to change, right? They need to change how they think of masculinity, how they think of themselves, their behavior, their thoughts. Most importantly, mindsets need to change. We have laws, but they are being violated against child marriage, against domestic violence. Why? nobody believes in that. That's my call to educators. We need to have critical dialogues in all educational institutions. To have discussions over patriarchy, about democracy, about gender equality. Talk about it. Talk to each other. And see where you arrive. The unravel patriarchy and unleash the potential of all of us to be members of joyous, nurturing, loving, safe, and just remember, there's only one, I must say, that unless, one thing you want to take away from this talk, that unless families are democratic and have full gender equality, your country, no public space, will have gender equality or true democracy. So you can't just mouth it. If you believe in it, then do it. Thank you.